Hey, happy Monday. I am Meredith. I am here with our message for the 13th of November, 2023. We'll be using Bonefire Tarot for our message, and it's not any old Bonefire Tarot. It's the second edition of the deck, and uh, some of the cards have been changed. They've certainly been polished up. The edge of the deck has this beautiful reddish color to it. Uh, how could it not be part of the collection here? <laughs> right, so let's jump in. What do we have going on? I do want to show you. Take a look at this. Hope I have it on the camera. I think I do. Look at Monday and look at all of the astrological activity going on. In addition to a new moon in Scorpio that took place this morning at 427 in this time zone. The moon is going to move into Sagittarius much later today, but for right now, the sun and the moon both are in Scorpio. We have our retrogrades, Neptune, Chiron, Jupiter, Uranus. I think that's all of them. I'm not really sure if we're okay with that. All right, let's get to the cards and look at this shuffle. All but one of the, po the positions in the reading is uh, doubled up. So cards have a story to tell. Let's get into it. I highly recommend you check out one of your favorite astrologers on YouTube. I've not done that yet myself, though I will, because that's a whole lot of heavenly activity. And I am feeling as if, before we even get into these cards, I feel like we are moving heaven on earth in this atmosphere. So for whatever timeline, wherever you are, whenever you see this video, uh, there are it feels to me that an energy has kicked off, started rolling, and it's rolling downhill, and it's picking up speed, and it is our passion. It is our passion to make whatever changes are in this interesting atmosphere. It's why I was showing you how busy the heavens are uh, today. So let's see what we've got with the cards. First set, two. And we're starting with the sun. That's excellent. Should we? <laughs> Should we stop the reading right there? <laughs> well, we won't. We'll keep going. We'll take a look at the whole picture. But starting a reading with the sun is amazing for us. This is miraculous. It's the happiest card in tarot. And it's bringing us incredible clarity. And I feel that it's within that clarity that an energy is kicked off and it is picking up speed and momentum. This card is paired with, naturally, look at that, the King of Wands. How fitting. Talk about motivation. I did just mention that we do feel highly motivated to shift, to address whatever the sun is shining on. I My feeling there is that could be temporarily uncomfortable. Next set, two cards. First, look at this. Ace of Cups. Loveless joy, happiness on overflow in the brilliant clarity of the sun. So anything that doesn't look, feel, smell, whatever, <laughs> like the Ace of Cups or the sun, gets our attention today with clarity. And I'm emphasizing the clarity part because I don't feel a tremendous amount of emotional hang up on anything that we do see through the Ace of Cups and the sun we have instead this motivation within divine masculine energy to take action on anything that we're seeing. Next card. Yeah, Ace of Cups paired with the Death card. Hello, Scorpio. So we have the sun and the moon in the sign of Scorpio at the time of this reading. Now we have the Scorpio card down on the table. So as I'm mentioning, it is possible that some of the energies that we are navigating today are temporarily uncomfortable and that's okay. I think we're all used to that by now because growth change is not for the faint of heart. Doing the work of your own manifestation prayer is courageous and it does bring up our vulnerability and it takes one strong individual to allow for all of that to be uh to to allow for all of that 
to become, whatever it is going to become. And the journey there is an opportunity for you to face joy and challenge with the same kind of passion, <laughs> right? We're not running from it is what I'm getting at. And I'm excited to see what else is in the reading. Next we have, look at this. This card has certainly been around quite a bit lately. It's the Seven of Swords. This card is called The Thief. We're not in the business of robbing ourselves of our own joy. And that's where the temporary discomfort might come from today because, or at least within this energy atmosphere, because we have a way of being. We have a way of filtering information. And that filter is being changed at a very deep, deep level through the Scorpio card. Something's coming to an end while something else simultaneously is birthed and renewed, right? So have a strategy for that. Have a, a strategy of acceptance and an attitude of gratitude for any discomfort that you may feel and begin to see the discomfort as a signal and a sign that something else needs your attention. It's not a point at which to become involved with our ego and have a dramatic, uh, a, drama a dramatic reaction to whatever is unfolding. Look at it differently. <laughs> Stick a fork in it. You're done, right? You're done with an old way of doing something. Now, it doesn't mean that you aren't going to encounter uh, experiences that have shown up on repeat for you. That's the blessing of it all is that you get to do it different this time if you choose to do it different. And I highly recommend doing it different. Next, yes. Because we're investing in a big, big way. That's the Seven of Swords paired with the Eight of Pentacles, which is keep doing what you're doing because it's working for you. So I'm sensing that there is a repetitive theme all eights are about motivation. This, in the suit of pentacles, this eight moves kind of slowly. That's okay because that means we have the ability to, with brilliant clarity, actually see what that slower moving influence is and take action on it to serve us in a much better way. So we have a very keen eye, even though this character has a fork in it, we have a very keen eye for what's not adding to our process of fulfillment. And what's not adding to is going to be temporarily uncomfortable because it is so familiar, though familiarity does not necessarily make a dream come true. It takes courage and it takes a daring attitude to challenge ourselves to rise above the energies that are less than favorable. Let's see what's next. Here's the chariot. <laughs> the one card that came out alone in this whole reading, and I like that it's here. This is the energy of Cancer. So there's a nurturing theme to this. There's something that we have been nurturing for a great period of life experience, and it's showing up. It's showing signs. It's on our foundation, and it's edging out some other energy that has to go. And when it goes, it's going to go swiftly. So if you find yourself getting engaged on an emotional level through ego awareness, this is the moment to pause in the actions that you're taking, Eight of Pentacles. Bring the light, bring the love, bring the transformation, and show up like the King of Wands. Be motivated to take action without hesitation, which is the message of the chariot. We are moving in a new direction that really, really does support us. So some old BS has to go. Next set. Oh, look. And there it is. There's the Ten of Swords. That's the Fallen Master. This is a fabulous card in tarot. I know it gets a gasp and it gets, you know, a fear response when we take a look at it. Because let's face it, Ten Swords in the back uh, don't necessarily paint a pretty picture. However... That's the Ace of Swords to the power of 10. And what's the core message of the Ace of Swords? Truth, clarity, everlasting strength. How can that be a negative? 
it shows a transformation happening. Thank you, death card. So we also have a nice big moon in the background there. I like that on a new moon. So the master gets up, shakes all this off, walks on. And this is us. This is a representation of us freeing ourselves from anything on that seven of swords that would rob us of fulfillment and joy. We're not in the business of doing that. So we're going to have to take a good look, keep a keen eye on the things that are pulling on our attention or that the sun is exposing and that the Ace of Cups is at the ready to pour love, bliss, joy, and happiness upon. It's worth it. What's paired with the Ten of Swords? Very nice. There's the Queen of Pentacles. So we're creating an experience where we get to have our cake and eat it too. <laughs> So there may be temporary moments of discomfort. Those are your signs and signals to take different action, a fresh approach, and ask yourself, what can I do differently? What have I not considered? My, my other favorite question, I ask this one a lot recently, how good can this get? No matter what I am faced with, no matter what I'm looking at, how good can it get? right? It's amazing. When we ask that question and we step back, you know, just a half step and allow the multiverse to bless us and consider, consider that we're charging this whole thing. We're the one that is creating every scenario that is unfolding in the now moment. We're the greatest influence of all in it. Now, that those questions, how good can it get? What have I not considered? What more can I learn? They open doors for us. And this is what allows us to do things differently, not some same old thing, same old way, producing same old results. So let yourself get uncomfortable. Be okay with it. Be courageous about it. Let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. What's going on behind the scenes that we're not exactly aware of? I like to think of this as how the universe has our back. Here's the Nine of Cups. See, dreams coming true, wishes fulfilled. I happen to really enjoy in this deck that there's a representation here of the death card with this skull, and I most especially love the heart that's sitting right there in the third eye. So your intuition is being stimulated. You're going to know you're going to recognize the signs and the symbols. The sun is going to shine on it. You're going to take action. And the action that you're taking is going to bring you all the way to the Ten of Cups because we can add this Ace to this Nine and get to the Ten, which is incredible fulfillment. Followed by the Four of Pentacles. Something of great value is emerging. And, you know, this card has a reputation in tarot of being called the miser, as if this person is sitting here, you know, unwilling to share. That's not really the case. This person is here uh, kind of in stable incubation, awaiting the moment, the perfect moment to bring something of great value into the light. My feeling is that time is now and it's happening through the energy of the sun, the king of wands, the ace of cups, the death card. And it's all ending up over here with this beautiful queen of pentacles where we manifest the very things we've been praying for. So we can't back away from that when the moment is upon us where we do get to take an action to push our dream across some sort of invisible finish line right we have to take action on it and what's waiting there for us is a whole lot of happiness it is an expansive happiness so that's the thing we've been continuing to invest our happiness again and again and again and then we have the queen this is receptivity energy we're receiving from the love bliss joy and happiness that we have invested in ourselves so it's not the moment to back away it's the moment to step forward Oh my gosh. And then the next card is the Emperor. Fantastic. Another four, an extremely stable four. Father of Tarot. More divine masculine energy. There's no way we're backing down. There's no way we're backing away. 
And I like that the chariot is in the reading with the emperor because the chariot is the child of the emperor and the empress. And this is us taking action with incredible motivation and determination. Followed by the moon card. So we have the sun and the moon in the reading. I like seeing that as well. The moon card is all about energies that are emerging that are seen in a different kind of light. Now the moon is borrowed light of the sun. I feel that they work together. The sun and the moon work together in this reading to show us death card, the transformation that is at hand, that is meant to be welcomed, not resisted. Mm. Because on the other side of that, as we journey through the 10 of swords over here, we step into the queen of pentacles where we meet our dreams, our wishes, manifestations, and fulfillment in an environment where they can actually be received, celebrated, and acted upon. All right, angel answers. Confirmation, answering questions, message, messages from your own guides, angels, ancestors. Whatever you got, throw it at this deck, and I'll put it on the table for you. <laughs> Ooh. Look at that. Listen to your intuition. Yes. Always the number one uh, action to take, listening to our intuition. I do feel, though, that's not a problem here if you take a look at all these other cards. Next, we have ask for help from others. Whatever that means to you, a conversation with one of your besties, a raw, authentic sharing, right? Uh, a conversation between you and your own guides. Ask your angels. Improving health. We've had a few cards like this out of this deck recently. And things are improving. Our health, our well-being, all of it. Because we're in... A transformative state thank you death card in the season of Scorpio really bringing a lot of energies up from the depth of our awareness we're looking at things we haven't looked at in a very long time and it could be stimulating us to act in a way that's old and familiar and we have to recognize that and then make the change and then we have emphatically <laughs> it's up to you that's right no one's gonna do this for you it's all you all right, final word on the reading from Shaman's Dream Oracle. How is our soulful presence informing our waking consciousness? We've got Fool's Embrace. Transmuting pain. Ooh, excellent though. What an incredible final word on the reading because that's what we're doing. We're taking a look at anything that doesn't work. I don't care how familiar and comfortable you are with it. Sometimes letting it go is the best thing you can possibly do. And that may not be comfortable. It's up to you though. You decide. Have a beautiful, beautiful Monday. Thank you as always for joining me here on the channel. Don't forget to like the video so important to myself and all the other YouTubers out there. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.